Simon Bridges. The, uh, or an earlier reading uh, to the Judicial Matters Bill that uh, the matters we're dealing with here uh, may in many ways seem dry, they may seem um, not even technical really, uh, in that we're just uh, increasing some numbers, creating a new role, and that's about it. But of course behind it all are uh, uh, important constitutional principles uh, that go to uh, the heart of the rule of law in this country and ultimately to uh, our democracy. And so it's important that we get bills like this uh, right and that we do a good and a thorough job. And it's good to see that here as we come to the third reading of what was one bill, now three bills, um, that we have done that. What this bill does is uh, what these bills do uh, are a number of things. We take uh, an original uh, law which created a judicial conduct commissioner and a judicial conduct panel which of course was important to give confidence in the complaints process uh, in relation to the judiciary and we create a new deputy judicial conduct commissioner and uh, as I said again in an earlier speech, there's many reasons why it's important to have a deputy. It's surprising in many ways that we didn't get this the first time uh, we did the job here and created a judicial conduct commissioner, given that in a small uh, nation like New Zealand, uh, where the legal community is obviously even smaller, people know each other well. Anyone who's worked in a law firm knows um, many other lawyers um, well, professionally and personally, and so there will be conflicts of interest that arise, appearances of conflicts, and of course the Commissioner uh, will from time to time get sick. Uh, be overseas, uh, not be able to perform his or her job for any variety of reasons. So it's important we do that. We create a Deputy Judicial Conduct Commissioner. We've also given that, uh, uh, that office the power to take no further action, something that uh, the panel, the Judicial Conduct Panel, I think it was, uh, recommended. And then we have, um, through a series of bills, uh, increase the number of associate judges of the High Court. I remember talking uh, fondly about associate judges in an earlier reading, what an important role they do play um, really in terms of getting through the lion's share of corporate, commercial, company, securities work in our country. And so they, they do a very good job for us. And then, of course, increasing the number of uh, district court judges, uh, high court judges, uh, court of appeal judges. And let me just um, ponder very briefly before I finish uh, my remarks. The district court judges increase from 140 to 156. Uh, I, I think it's worth noting that our district court judges do a superb job uh, for us in this country. Uh, as a, a lawyer, I appeared before a wide variety of judges of all uh, shapes and sizes and intellects, but as I say, they do a very good uh, job. I, better, no, I, won't, I won't dwell on that point. They, they do a good job for us in the Tauranga uh, Court and District. We are exceptionally well served by judges Thomas, Harding, Rollo, Ingram, Bidwa, uh, Somerville and Gagan uh, in, uh, in our courts. They, uh, all of them, do an excellent job day in, day out under what is uh, a growing demand for their, sadly, given that most of it is criminal and family work, a growing demand for their uh, expertise and wisdom. So, uh, with those remarks, this is... Um, uh, a series of bills that do a number of what some might think of as boring things, but nevertheless behind all that are important principles and uh, issues that go to the heart of the rule of law and democracy in our country.
Honourable Leanne Dalesville. Mr Speaker, <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to uh, address the uh, three bills that now uh, take the place of the Judicial Matters Bill that we have been debating over the last wee while. Um, I think it is worthy of reflecting on uh, some of the comments that were made by the National Party when it was in the opposition and when this bill was introduced 